May peace be with you and unification to the nation. What's going on, guys? So I have a very strong interview um, that my wife conducted with this brother that we found on Clubhouse. Um, he ha- he happens to have been giving a testimony or some sort of a breakdown on his experience with Santeria. And if you don't know, Santeria is an offshoot of the Ifa slash voodoo religions that were spread throughout the Caribbean and South America and Mexico and even to the northeast, I mean, to the southeast of the United States as hoodoo. Um, this all comes from the similar culture of, again, voodoo um, that originated with the Yoruba tribe in West Africa. Now, I've made a few videos on this religion, and of course, I've been uh, combated <laughs> with many angry people, uh, understandably so, because they feel like I'm not in it, so I shouldn't have a opinion on it there. So we took this opportunity to get a perspective of someone who actually was dealing in that world, dealing in that field, and he is going to give his opinion on what the Orishas are, who the Klonko ancestors are, and what does all this stuff mean in his opinion? And as far as what, what was all this um, in the grand scheme of his whole spiritual journey? So uh, my wife, she did a fantastic job um, with this interview. Um, I think she controlled the pace really well. I'm going to leave her channel um, in the description. I'm going to also pin it in the comment section. Um, and yeah, she's probably going to help me conduct more interviews because she's pretty good. She seems to be pretty good at it. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that this will be edifying um, to anyone who is, is still somehow straddling the fence when it comes to, um, I guess, this whole spiritual um, belief system, um, this whole new age movement, and how everyone is mixing things up. In the live stream that I did last week, there, what I was really talking about, I'm talking about people who are delving into a lot of these different um, spiritual uh, belief systems, bundling them all up and labeling it as spirituality without knowing the origin of it. I think it's very prudent to understand the origin of any spiritual practice that you um, do. And if you can't find that, then find the account of those who have dealt with it and see where, where it has led them. You know, this brother seems to have a good head on his shoulders. Um, and yeah, so I, I hope you guys enjoy it. May peace be with you. So I'm helping him with conducting interviews and getting any information I can find about the topic. No problem. And you can be as open as you want. And if there's a question that you don't want to answer, just let me know. No problem. Can you explain your journey to Santeria and what made you interested in pursuing that spiritual path? So, the, my interest in Santeria was just, you know, from, you know, stems from being in a religious family for a long time in, in my adolescent, my younger years, you know, my, as a kid and a lot of my family being, um, pastors and priests and, and just involved in all kinds of different religions, especially when it came to um, Puerto Rico. You know, they were very religious over, over there from, from Baptist to Pentecostal to Christ, Christianity. And that none of that was working for me. You know, wasn't working for me. It wasn't helping me be a better person. It wasn't, I wasn't gaining no real knowledge about life, you know, through it. It was just, you know, and I was just young. It was just, it wasn't something that I cared for. And then as I, as I got older, um, you know, I had some friends that were, you know, when I started my, my, my journey into, you know, um, no, uh, looking forward to figuring out what is happening in, in the world. You know, I, I, I just, um, dived into, uh, a, a plethora of different information from, you know, getting into the esoteric world, you know, dealing with um, the tarot cards, numerology, astrology, and and I had a, um, a close friend of mine that he was very into, um, you know, the, um, the Santeria more because he was looking for permission to do 
certain things in his life, you know, and he has this thing that, you know, the, the Santos were guiding him to say, okay, it's okay for you to move in this capacity. So um, then I found I was going through something at the time, and and I said, let me see what this is about, because I was going um, into all this religious stuff, and that wasn't working for me, and now I was studying the politics and, and the um, and, and I was still, um, I was studying religion as well, just not being a part of it, or researching certain aspects of religion, and then the esoteric world, whether it was the tarot reading, mm-hmm. you know, that um, I was d- doing for a long time, that, you know, I, I still do to, to this time, you know, um, you know, utilizing that just for, for information. And then I got into the Santeria because of him, I said, let me find out what this is about. And... In my research and studying that, you know, it just seems like it's just a bunch of these things that, that you know, you could conjure up, and and these things come and they tell you, um, they tell you when you could do things, how to do things, they give you insight on 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 things that you're experiencing, and tell you what could happen down the line in the future, and if you want to alter something, you got to do these certain rituals. You know, um, some some of them are called baths. They call baños when it comes to the santeria. Um, and then then you have this aspect of of channelers in Spanish that they call caballos, mm-hmm. meaning that you know the the spirit will um, mount the, the individual like you will mount a horse, that's aka caballo, and then the translation will happen from somebody. Um, taking over your physical presence and, and now you become one of the things with whether it's on tune um, um a lot of people anaisa um um gabriel or it was just all, all kinds of different things people and they so that being said in, in the journey of this you know we met some profound and do some profound people through another friend of mine um that was from dominican republic and this this lady was like world renowned. Uh, you know, she was very known. I don't, I'm not gonna say world renowned. Uh, oh, she was well respected in, in DR and in mm-hmm. other countries that she was, um, you know, reading for people. And she, and she was good. You know, even for me, I would say, yeah, she she did have great information. And you know, and then in the process of this, you know, we were connected to um, her daughter, which was very known. Uh, when it came to um, the caballo, you know, doing the channeling, mm-hmm. and it came, it came to the point where we, um, we we sent to them, you know, we flew them in to come in from DR, especially um, one of my closest friends. He uh, wanted them to come in because he was looking for answers to get permission to do um, certain um, transactions in his life mm-hmm. that he wanted to make sure it didn't come with no hiccups. So. When I met these individuals, you know, they would come, we, we had them come down a, a couple of times and we, we were able to convince the daughter who didn't want to do it anymore because she said that when she allows um, the channeling to happen, that it takes away a lot from her and she gets very tired. She feels like an energy strain and, and um, she doesn't know what she's saying or, or what she's doing once she has been, um, um, once she's channeling, which, which I call possession, not knowing better now, um, you're, that's possession. Right. And so now when she was here, um, I remember clearly how she was in my living room and we were um, just sitting there talking and she was going to conjure up a, a female, a, a woman saint called Anaisa. And that was the person that she would always conjure up. And um, the Anaisa is the color yellow. Um, she had a um, drink of certain type of like soda, um, and and she had to um, have like um, cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 she doesn't smoke. Um, the, the the woman herself naturally is not a cigarette smoker. So we we had to have these things for her. So now we just hang it out. It took a little, it took a while, and it was like from one minute to another, she like, let's say she was sitting in, in a sitting stand, you know, on the sofa, and she like went down like real fast, like her head all the way down between her legs, and she popped back up, and her 
how facial expressions change, her characteristics change, her voice altered, and she now was was talking. This is in Spanish. She's mm. talking. She's talking in Latin, and and um and now she's speaking, and and, and she's now into the role playing of um this lady, Anaisa, no. and now she's. Yeah, she's she's a whole different person. She she gets the she says, "Where's my cigarette?" She gets the cigarette. She starts smoking cigarettes. She's having a drink of uh, the soda that's there, and now she's conversing with all of us. And and then you know, fast forward, you know, she's telling me that um, that she knows why she was here because she came to meet me because I'm meant to be uh, a caballo that I met for. Um, that I have the capacity to let, to channel, and to bring something into me, and she wants to pass, she seems to pass me um, her gift. So wow. I'm like, all right. And, you know, she told me, like, things that um, that was happening, uh, things that I was experiencing, and they were never really, like, you know, one thing I realized, and, and when I would go to see, you know, uh, in this journey, when I would go to these um, uh, practices, and and they will like channel or they will tell me things. They will never really be specific. It, it's never specific, like like um like telling me like um you know um tomorrow or or whatever it was. It was just not like it was very broad. It was things that can happen. You know um you know to, to me it's like the tarot cards. Like I could tell someone that if you continue being this way in your present moment, it can lead to these type of outcomes, you know? So it's very broad, it's up to the individual to make better decisions. And so the second time that um, that she came down, um, she told me that I had to get uh, a gold bracelet, an 18 carat gold bracelet, it couldn't, be, it couldn't be 14 carat, it had to be 18 carat. And that she, I, I did get the bracelet, I went, maybe spent like four, so it didn't have to be nothing um, gaudy or anything. It could have been. Mm-hmm. A, it just had to be eighteen carry bracelet. So I spent maybe like, three, four, five hundred dollars, something like that, to get an eighteen carry gold bracelet. And, and I did, and I got it because I was honoring um, the, the tradition. I was honoring um, my my study and my journey, my research in it to see how this plays out. And and they will always tell me things to do. You know, like um, you have to go to seven different churches on seven different days, mm. you know, and it was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, and there had to be, like, Catholic churches, you know, you couldn't just find seven different, it had to be all Catholic churches, seven different churches, and and all that, and we all know, you know, Catholic church, they really, it's the same, mm. they always got these statues of saints all over and shit, so, and if you miss it, the thing was for me is that the twist was that if you miss the day, um, you have to start over and that you'll be punished. Like something is going to, um, you're going to get punished. Like something's going to go wrong because of your your insubordination, basically, mm. you know, of not completing the task ahead. And then at this time, I'm starting to think to myself, why will some um, santo or saint um, that being conscious of want to punish me for something. Like first and foremost, I'm I'm, I'm indulging myself in this and coming to somebody who's um, um, as prolific as at this because of health. Not for you to now punish me. I'm not listening because what's the point of that? Like how are you this loving um, energy if you're going to punish me for not doing? You know, and you always have to sacrifice something. You know, you know whether it was fruits and and uh, or burn a certain candle or you had to, you know, for some people in some um, arts of this, you know, they, they kill the chicken, mm-hmm. you know, if, they, if they're doing some type of ritual in order to get you something that you need or, or like or want, you know, they got to cut a chicken and like they got to take away from something to give you what you need. Right. And, you know, and this is where it became... Um, suspicious for me because being a truth seeker and, and, uh, and on this journey, I was still researching other things about life that I kind of came across that it was like, well, creation is about creating and it's mm-hmm. about expansion 
and why do I have to take away from one thing in order to get something else? You know, it's like the whole system we live in, it, it's always robbing you. Like, if you want this, you got to give give up that. Right. You know, and, and, that's, and that's negative. There's nothing positive to that. It's nothing positive. And then in my, my continuous journey, it became um, a fact to me that nobody ever needs to be, um, nobody ever needs to uh, allow some other form to take over your body in order so you can know what you need to know. And, and this is what channeling is. This is what being a medium is. There's, there's nothing positive to me when it comes to that. Like, why do you have to now um, control my actions and my mannerisms and, 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 and go inside of me, you know, in order to, for me to know something? And there's just nothing positive. I come to understand that this is all, um, not that it's false and it's not happening. This is what possession is. Mm-hmm. People are being possessed. These are not positive entities. Um, these are demonic forces that are being placed on people, conjuring up a, a, a multiplicity of false um, deities or saints. Um, and, and this is just negative. Um, the, the human spirit and soul is, is so powerful and has all the right to know what needs to be known. Mm-hmm. And you don't. And, and the individual does not need any kind of entity or being to come in in a positive a positive um, energy or energy source or a positive consciousness or spirit will not infringe on the free will of a, of a being to just take over your body because when they were doing their whole ritual on um, my 18 karat gold bracelet that I had she told me that one day um, that I'm going to experience a supernatural event and not to um, be scared or fearful, just let it happen. And then months later, I'm in my house and I felt like an overwhelming presence over me, like just something attempting to to take over my body. And I Mm. fell to the floor and And I did not like the way it felt. I did not like it. It didn't feel positive. It didn't feel right. It felt like I was being invaded um, against my free will. And I fell to the floor and I couldn't really move. And I recall vividly dragging myself to my bed. And since I couldn't shake whatever the hell this feeling was, um, I, I forced myself to go to sleep. I like dragged myself on my bed and I just closed my eyes and, and I fell asleep in order not to allow whatever it was. And I had to tell myself, I do not consent mm-hmm. to whatever it is that I'm feeling right now. And I fell asleep at that moment. And, and then I woke up feeling brand new again. And I took off that bracelet. I threw that shit out. <laughs> um, yes, I threw it out. I went and anything that I had that had to do, that was the final straw for me. Anything that I had in my house that that lady to help claim to help me and all that, I got rid. I got rid of it because I felt like things were just off and things were just wrong. And, and I said, "Oh hell no!" And I got rid of all these. It, it felt like whatever she put. And I'm not saying the lady was uh, malicious or, or bad because sometimes I think that people are doing things not knowing the real agenda behind it. And, and they fall victim to these things like a doctor will. A doctor goes to school and he learns to be a doctor mm-hmm. because he looks forward to helping mankind, you know, heal in his practice, not knowing that there is a bigger agenda behind that. Exactly. And, they, and they utilize you as a gatekeeper to do certain things in order so they could um, um, infringe on your free will through what is called a doctor. And, and it's up to, it takes time for that doctor to come to some realization that, hey, Something's wrong here. I'm not really um, doing things that benefit humanity. And when he starts opening his mouth, all of a sudden he gets fired or he gets shadow banned and he has that problem at that time. Mm-hmm. You know, the same thing with the, with the Santeras. Like, they, they, they feel like like we're doing the right thing because we want to tap into some source that will be beneficial, that, that we need help. Like, things are messed up. Things are fucked up in the world. Is there something greater than us that we always 
externalizing everything to to find something greater or find some type of savior and something when we need to know this ourselves and do this for ourselves and save ourselves by being aware and mindful and doing the right researching in order so you could come into your own truth and not externalize everything. You know, so Santeras or Santeros, they don't they don't know that they're being tricked, that they're being hoodwinked to 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 think like there's some type of thing that they conjuring up to to um to help them when they did to possess you, to mm-hmm. manipulate your consciousness. And and I just do not vibe with that at all. I appreciate you sharing that because I felt similar concerns and there's a few things you commented on that I want to just or that you mentioned that I want to gain clarification on. So, for example, you said something along the lines of you can get uh, punished or if you don't appease them in the way that um, they're requesting, then they can do uh, what like certain curses or like what is like the punishment, for example? Well, the punishment needed like. So I would say the punishment, I, I really can pinpoint because they never really say, you know, like, or when they say, oh, if you don't do this, you know, um, you, you know you're gonna get punished or there's going to be um, consequences, let's say, mm-hmm. for, because of, your, um, of you not fulfilling your, your agreement, so to speak. So let's just say the punishment could be anything, like at this point, it would be that you would have to think like anything that's going wrong in your life is this the punishment that's happening now because things are going right. wrong. So let's say like friends of mine that I knew in the past, you know, a lot of like I noticed when it comes to the the Latin people, um, when it comes to let's say Puerto Ricans and, and Dominicans, I'm Puerto Rican myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when it comes to like the drug trade and, and drug dealers, they like to go to Santeras. And, and, and get the goyales, you know, the bees that they put around their neck for protection, mm. you know, you know, so you're doing something negative by poisoning your community. And, and, and listen, I'm, I'm not judging. This is just facts, you know, of what we're doing because the system gave us the poison to, to sell because I was victim to this when I was young, of course. you know, myself, you know, and you st- and, you, and what, what I was doing technically, so I speak for me, so nobody, when they hear this, he's offended that I was selling poison to, 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 to my people, you know, um, that's what I was doing. You know, you're, you're, you're making money and, and, and you're prospering financially and in, the, in, in that prosperity, it's the demise of your culture, mm-hmm. of, of your people, you know, they get hooked on crack or, or heroin or whatever it is that, that, that you're selling and, and your neighborhood's turning to shit and everybody's becoming a fiend and you're prospering off of this. Like, there's nothing positive about that. It's just exactly. nothing positive. You know, people are, are if they fall because they choosing to do it, and then you're going to have some ignorant people that are going to make statements like, well, if, if I'm not selling it, somebody is. Right. You know, or, you know what? If, if we all stop selling it, then nobody will be, you know, at this point. And now people will find other things to do. Maybe they'll take better uh, walks in nature. Maybe they'll do more grounding. Maybe they'll do some sun gazing because there's nobody around to sell a poison anymore. So now they gotta find another way to fix themselves and it might be in a holistic path at this point. You know, so and mm-hmm. that being said, you know, in, in that field, uh, a lot of guys will get these um, goyales and get these beads and, and it'd be like a thousand beads. It looked like like you was going to the, the, uh, the that festival that they go in um, in New Orleans when they get the beads, um, you know, and yeah, what is that festival called? Uh, like the the Mardi Gras festival. Yeah, the Mardi Gras festival. That's how much beef uh, people be having when when they get these um, santero beads that they put on, and and it's all supposedly for like some type of protection. That next thing I know, I know a lot of these people that go to jail or they get killed, and it's like, well, damn, bro, you you spend all this money getting all these baños getting all these bags and you're telling me that when you get locked, when you got locked up and you got these 10, 15 years, that is because you didn't listen. So the punishment was that they sent you to jail, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you want all these fees because they said that this was going to protect you, that you wasn't, you was going to be safe in your endeavors and, and, and those actions they're taking. First, first of all, that, um, uh, First of all, these, these excuse me, I gotta just, I gotta ignore a call. Um, mm-hmm. These endeavors you're doing in the first place are already negative. 
So you're asking permission to do something negative. Right. You know, and it's not positive. And then you want protection of this negative aspect of your life that you keep conjuring up all the time. And then you're going to ask protection for something that's not even positive in itself. And then be mad that it equals up to you doing 10 years. Mm. Even when it comes to like, in the, the African culture, when it comes to the, the Ifa and the reaches, you know, based on, um, um, in that journey, I come to find out with uh, um, talking on a lot of these different platforms, they, there is a culture um, of indigenous people that are in, I don't know if they were in Africa or something, and and they will do the whole Arisha thing, mm-hmm. and I just don't figure out how is it, and when they conjure up the, the, the spirits, they will actually cut themselves mm. and their body, you know, and their arms, and then they have these big slices in the arm and they will bleed. And, you know, I just, there's nothing positive on inflicting yourself and cutting yourself open and bleeding in order to conjure up. Those are blood sacrifices. Mm-hmm. That is demonic. There's nothing positive. There's no way that a human being will ever be able to convince me of anything other. Like, how do you cut yourself? How do you inflict pain on yourself in order so you could conjure up some force that's going to guide you. Like, why would the ancestors want to hurt you in order so they could speak to you, right. if that's the case? Like, it, it, it serves no purpose. You know, I can see you sitting down in, in, in your natural state and under a nice tree or something and, and sitting there and just feeling the energy and hearing the voices of of the ancestors, if that's the case, whispering through a, 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 a nice, beautiful summer, spring breeze. Exactly. You know, and then instead of like, now you gotta get some type of knife and slice your arm and, and, and cut yourself open and then you're bleeding, like, what kind of demonic shit is that? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to know, um, in your opinion, so the spirits or the uh, ancestors or the saints, these, how would you classify these beings? You would say, I guess, like demonic forces, or how would you classify them? And, and you would also put the Orishas in the same category? I, 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 I go across the board and I put it all in the same category. And, and I'm not here saying that there is not um, loving energy, because of course, you know, with, you know, if you're loving, you you have loving energy, mm-hmm. you know, it's just what it is. So that means there is loving energy being put out and, and can there be, um, you know, uh, an energy source that, that could confront, uh, um, show themselves to you or, or present themselves in some type of capacity to the individual in a loving way? Yes. Does it need to consume you and to um, take you over, take over? Um, no. And when it comes to, like, ancestors for me, Mm-hmm. And for what I personally know, um, in my perspective, that we are the ancestors because we've been here many times. So when, when for me, when, when we came in, um, I was talking to the ancestors, I tell myself, who are you really talking to then? Because that person's not here no more. You know, that, that energy source now, to me, in my research, um, is being um, brought back into a, a, a recar- reincarnational cycle. So my consciousness has been here for a very long time, many times, and it was transferred back in, um, back into a, a, a baby, a baby boy in this lifetime, you know, through a, a Puerto Rican mother, you know, a Latin fam- mm-hmm. um, family, and now I'm raised New York Rican because I'm first generation um, Puerto Rican born in in the Bronx, New York. So I'm New Yorkican. And yeah, it's nice that in this lifetime, I have some, some Latin sazon and flavor, you know, <laughs> you know, if you, if you want to get into it, yes, you know, um, um, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, we are Tainos, with the indigenous Tainos, uh, Indians, and mm-hmm. Ararat, which mm-hmm. is, you know, um, um, black, black indigenous um, people. You know, all the Caribbean people are Ararat and Tainos. You know, from the island of Jamaica to 
Bahamas, Bermuda, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Cuba, like all those islands there, and Santo Domingo, Haiti, we, we all Arabic and Dainos, you know, um, that's great. Like exactly. I, when, you know, researching that is nice. Okay, yes, you know, you get some type of clarification of, of what that is. Is that who I really am? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not because that means that if 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 I lived, if my consciousness was streamlined in another um, body in another time, maybe a hundred years before, maybe a thousand years before, that means I was I was born into another body at another time, as another race that wasn't the Latin because Puerto Ricans only go back a certain amount of time. Tainos mm -hmm. only go back a certain type of time. You know, there was a time that no Tainos existed. So if I was, my consciousness was here before all that, then am I really Latin? Do I really gotta pop my fist and go to every <laughs> Puerto Rican day parade that they do? You know, right. and I think this is the ignorance that's being bestowed upon mankind that's allowing them to do the stupid shit like Santeria and all that because we're looking so much to be connected to something that we lost the true feeling of connecting to yourself and knowing that you've been here multiple times and you've been, your that I am the ancestors and that we all are the ancestors. So I'm not looking forward to no answers from no answers or some figment of, of imagination. Now, can there be other energetic forces around that, that are in another frequency or another dimension that, that we can hear and, mm -hmm. and see? Yes, because we're multidimensional beings and we have the capacity to um, travel consciously to multidimensional reality. So we could hear them, some people could see them, some people could speak to them, and, and I think they're just giving names to them, and some of them are just not to our best interest. They just, they just not, because if that was true, we wouldn't be in the pile of shit that we've been, that we're going through now as a collective, you know, experience all the things that we're experiencing. No, that makes a lot of sense. It's safe to say that although there are um, good people who have good energy and can channel good energy, a lot, if not majority of people are being deceived or hoodwinked, essentially, by entities or beings that may not have their best interests. Correct. My understanding is that to be true to me, that yes, we, um, I've been hoodwinked and, and I'm pretty good um, with, um, I don't like to say, uh, um, judge of character mm -hmm. um and i'm pretty good on uh, receiving information and and and, and if i've been hoping with all the research i've been doing for 26 27 years about what it is to be a human being on this realm a biological form in a three-dimensional reality if i know i've been hoping and i still feel that they still hoping that i'm being fooled with to, to some degree not a great degree, like many years, mm -hmm. you know, um, then I know there's a lot of people that are being straight bamboos, absolutely straight bamboos, because this is my life's journey. And it's been mm -hmm. for over 25 years of me researching and, and talking my talk. And, and it's no different, you know, um, when a doctor goes to to school and, and, and aces all his classes and gets his diploma and then he gets his PhD and then everybody says, this guy knows what he's talking about because he went to school for 20 years and got his PhD. It ain't no different from the research I've been doing for over 25 years and got my PhD in knowing what I know. Exactly. You ha I don't know if you still have friends or family members or people that you know that are still practicing this, but if you do, uh, what do you think keeps them involved in it still? Just that need to connect to some kind of source or ancestors? Like, what do you think really keeps people involved in this, even though they may have to do certain sacrifices or even though they may have to hurt themselves? Like, why do people, if, in your opinion, stay? I think, I think that the people that I do know that are into it, um, I think they just stay into it because um, they get, one, they, they, they just get conditioned like anybody else would be religious, like being a, a you know, a, a Bible thumper, we call them, you know, mm -hmm. it's the same reason why people stay stuck in, in, in relationships. They, they, they just, 
accustomed to it. It's, it's what they used to. It's what they feel comfortable in um, because they don't want to go outside the box because it changes everything. It eradicates thought processes and, mm-hmm. and people are not ready to change what they feel um, they're comfortable with. So when it comes to uh, these people that are still in Cisanteria, and, and some of them like the power, you know, especially if um, if these forces have um, given them what they think that they've been asking for, you know, then then you're going to stay and, and, you'll, and you'll be willing to, to betray humanity to some degree because some things are working because that's how that's how these jains and these demonic entities and these lucian energy um, energy vampires work they're going to give you something in order so you could fall victim and be and you could become prey they're going to give you they're going to give you some information that you're going to put to work and it's going to be like oh my god this works and this and that and then you're going to continue doing that and then when they start really losing your energy, you're gonna be okay with it because you're gonna say, well, I'm fine with that because at least I get this. Right. You know, and and instead of just saying no, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do none of this. So I think this is what allows people to stay stuck in those paradigms because they get used to it and, and they feel like they getting something that they want in exchange for um, all the other shit that is like whatever. It's no different from like in a relationship. You know, some people don't know how to let go because when it comes to men, let's say a man, um, he won't let go of his girlfriend knowing that he's playing her dirty, mm-hmm. that um, he's not doing the right thing. And it might be for the simple fact because he cannot consciously um, feel like, he cannot think of you sleeping with somebody else. Right. So he'll hold on to you and, 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 and be an asshole still because he doesn't want you to sleep with anybody else. It's like a possession. he will do something to his manhood. Right. You know, and and it's it's just weird that people think this way. You know, it's the same way somebody goes to work knowing they hate their damn job and they hate waking up in the morning and taking the train for an hour to go to a job that they don't like and they're only doing it because they need the money so they can have a roof over their head. Right. They view it as a, even though they don't want to do it, they view it as a, an even exchange or a necessary exchange to, you know, live the, the life that they need to live. So it's like, unfortunate. Correct. I know that this is running slightly over, so I just had one more question. Okay. So if, so again, I haven't practiced um, Santeria. I'm not, I haven't dabbled into Ifa and none of those type of practices. So when I talk about it or when my partner talks about it, uh, people will typically uh, say, you know, you don't have any experience in it. You don't really know what you're talking about. You don't actually know the spirit. You don't know the saints. You don't know them like we do. So your perspective is limited. So I guess if anyone was listening to this who was contemplating getting into Santeria, contemplating getting into Ifa, from uh, as a like a closing perspective from someone who's been in it um, and has a lot of research about it, what would you say to them, people who are looking into getting into it? Well, I would I would just share with um, individuals that it's a it's a it's a process that you don't need in your life for you to become a better person to be the great person that you already are. And if you feel like in your journey, if you want to tap into this in order so you could be well rounded, you know, I mean, listen, it's free will. So you you have the free will to indulge yourself in anything. You know, as long as you know what you're doing, you can indulge yourself with anything and you don't get no karma for that, for for um, utilizing the act of free will. That is your right to be God sovereign and free and, and you have the will um, to do whatever it is you choose to do. I would just share that in my experience, um, there's certain things I don't need to do. You know, I don't need to be religious now to be a great man. You know, I don't need to be in Santeria to be a great man. Uh, it was just something in my journey that I indulged in because I was searching. And if I had a me um, 20 years ago, you know, it would have helped me to supersede certain journeys that I indulged in and I would have just detoured and took a different path, a little more direct path 
that I've taken because, you know, there would have been somebody that I had that was, um, and I had a few people actually that in my, in my process that they came in and, and they helped, you know, shift because I was attracting now better information to allow me to meet better people to, to advance me in a better way. And so this does happen and you also need to, to be um, receptive. You also need to be vulnerable to be able to trust and have the courage that, that you're not, that, um, that you're putting yourself in somebody, um, and I'm saying this loosely, hand to, to um, nurture you, you know, and, and you look forward that these are good people, you know. So I know that I am a great person, that I am a great man, that I am team humanity, you know, and I'm not going to let uh, money or, 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 or fame or anything like that to to um, turn me against humanity and become, you know, an imposter, what I call an imposter spirit. I'm not an imposter spirit, so I look forward that people do take what they're hearing now and, and what would, um, and what they will listen to when this is put on this YouTube channel or whatever you're going to use this for, that people trust that I am team humanity and, and, and trust that my journey was a journey to come back to your ears so, so you could not have to make certain decisions and you could supersede what took me time. That what took me 20 years, you can do, you can master in a year, in two years, in three years, and then you could become better than me in, in, in my time. So then you could now help the next person evolve is faster in daytime so we could stop the bleeding from continu continuously being bombarded with ignorance and, 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 and being bestowed um, demonic rituals that they're putting on us because if you see the way things are unfolding, you also see how it's unfolding in the music and how all these artists are mm -hmm. doing wearing the all color red and and people like The Weeknd is doing a show that says Satan in the background with, with um, destruction is, is the, 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 what he's performing behind him on his, on his show is built destruction and then he's singing and you think that, oh, what a great stage he has. And no, if you look at the stage, it was all a city being destroyed exactly. and then it says Satan. You, you know, you see all this Luciferian, um, of culture being moved forward, all this thing in this culture being, you know, the whole reversal, the whole baffling, the whole the, uh, transgenderism, exactly. transhumanism, you know, it's a reversal of consciousness that they've been doing, manipulating the consciousness. And, and, and this is all started back in the days with the esoteric practice, with, with utilizing now the IFA, the Santeria, the channeling, you know, because for the, for the Caucasian culture, they use channeling you know you mm -hmm. have the druids you have them doing the media and stuff all this is conjuring up demonic forces in order to help um to help the collective for victim and become praise to a luciferian culture that's being bestowed to this very moment and if you continue allowing yourself to fall victim to these practices you are going to continue perpetuating that consciousness and it's going to come to the point where in the future um the, the soul body will not want to incarnate no more to have a three-dimensional experience of ascension because it won't matter in the future because everything will be artificial it will be transhumanism it, it will serve no purpose for the soul to have to experience this reality anymore and that would be a shame because it is a fun place. It is a beautiful place. And it is your right to manifest and, and be God sovereign and free. Yeah, thank you. People don't realize that they have the power because we have free will. We have our agency. You give life to these entities or you give life to these demonic practices or these Lucifer Luciferianism um, cult type uh, celebrity artists and things like that. People don't realize that you actually like we have the power, we have the free will and the determination to have whatever life that we want. So I think that was a beautiful ending response. And I appreciate you taking time out to just answer some of these questions and go over your experience with Santeria. 
Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And when you do put this out there, please send it to me so I can help um, um, share it. Oh, of course, of course. Um, and do you want to link any of your social media um, on here as well, if anybody wants to follow you or uh, ask any questions that they may have to you directly? Well, yeah, my, my social media is, um, Instagram is um, underscore um, Disco Dave 303 underscore, and you can follow me there. Um, I don't do too much um, uh, of this. I used to do live, but then I got shadow banned for a while, you mm -hmm. know, um, we know why, of you know, course. especially when you're hearing what I'm saying here. So, um, uh, so that's my Instagram um, there. So yeah, feel free to you know to hit me up. Um, I'm always here for the people. Like I said, I'm Team Humanity, which allows me to have this interview. You know, I it's, it's my honor to um, to take the time out to share the, my truth and this information because we in a time where we need to get it together because there is a system in place to stagnate us always, you know, mm -hmm. to manipulate us and, and loose and siphon our energy to turn everybody into imposter spirits. And, and if we do not change this, um, we're going to be full-fledged in a reality which is called the New World Order. And, and, and that the New World Order is it's an, old, it's an old order called the Luciferian Covenant that goes back tens and tens of thousands of years. A very long time that's been in, that's been put in place and it's been reconstructed as the new world order and this is what we're experiencing right now and for us to win it's never going to be about protesting and it's not and, and listen i do not share information for people to get upset and angry this is not for you to fight the system in the sense of like protesting and, right. and, and doing a revolutionary war or some type of civil war or some purging, you know, that's part of their system. We beat the system by mastering ourselves. We beat the system by actually being loving, being compassionate, by by knowing what you are and, and knowing that you are God sovereign and free and that is how we win. It's never externalized by attacking the system because the system wants that. They know that. They want people to protest. They want people angry. Exactly. They want people frustrated. They want you to get the guns and fight back. They put the guns for that very reason. So um, we have to protect yourself by all means. You, you don't let nobody come into your house and to your doorstep and bring you the problem <laughs> without you, um, you know, handling your business. And if they're not coming to your doorstep, why would you go to theirs? Exactly. It is a spiritual war. It is a energy siphoning war. They are after us energetically. They are after our frequency, our vibration, our spirit. So I agree. Protesting and these other outward expressions of, uh, you know, our frustration, they are playing right into the hands of what they want. So I, I agree wholeheartedly. All right. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. And um, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Feel free. All right. Bye. So I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. Um, he definitely said a lot of very strong topics that I actually want to cover um, in a separate video. Uh, I'm going to have to really do a detailed study so I can really get my point across when it comes to the origin of these things. But what I want you guys to do, if you do have questions that you might want addressed in a future interview or anything of that sort, you know, leave them in the comment section and I'll definitely have my wife reach out to him again and try to see if she can either get another audio interview or if he doesn't have time, then he can simply just write down the questions. He can do it however um, he sees fit within his time schedule. But other than that, I definitely do plan to cover many of those topics that uh, he spoke about because it's just really interesting that uh, I too came to some of the same conclusions. However, <laughs> some of the stuff that he did share was stuff that was pretty mind blowing. Um, so that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.